We're going to look at lattice energy now. Lattice energy is the energy of converting gas phase ions into a ionic solid. Lattice energy is proportional to melting point, so a bigger lattice energy is a bigger melting point. A smaller lattice energy is a smaller melting point. Lattice energy is proportional to the electrostatic uh, charge between the two ions. So we have uh, the equation for that is we have constant, we're not going to worry about the product of the two charges divided by the distance between them. The proportionality of this equation is that the product of the charges is the most important property. So we look at that alone first. And if one of the products is not dominant, then of the a couple that are dominant, then we would have to look at the radius. So the product of the charges, as they increase, the lattice energy increases. For the radius, smaller radius would mean a larger lattice energy. So that's an inverse relationship. So let's look at um, two sets of, a couple sets of compounds. So if we have our set of compounds down here, ionic compounds, we want to know which one has the highest lattice energy. We first want to do our Q1 times Q2. For potassium, it says charge one. For means a charge one, so the product is, is one. Calcium is a plus two. Chlorine is a minus one. So the product is two. We're not going to worry about the charges. They're always going to have a negative product, showing that it's an attractive force. For aluminum nitride, aluminum is plus three. The nitrogen is a minus three. The product is nine. For strontium bromide, our strontium is a plus two. Bromine is a minus one. The product is two. For sodium sulfide, sodium is one. Sulfur is two. The product is two. So the aluminum nitride wins out as having the largest product, so our largest lattice energy. So aluminum nitride will have our highest melting point also. Let's look at uh, two other compounds. Comes from a worksheet I'm gonna do another problem for. So our product, uh, Q1, Q2, potassium chloride is a one times a one, product of one. Magnesium oxide is two times two, a product of four. So the magnesium oxide is highest lattice energy. Let's look at another one over here. So three compounds, lithium chloride, sodium chloride, potassium chloride. Our product of charges is one times one equals one. One times one equals one. One times one equals one. So they're all the same. So what we're going to do is look at the radius. So chlorine is all the same. So we're just looking at lithium, sodium, potassium. Of those, lithium being on the top of the column of the alkaline metals will be our smallest. And potassium will be our largest. So our lattice energy. is going to be the largest for the smallest radius and the smallest for the largest. So the largest lattice energy would be our lithium chloride. So let's do a calculational problem. 
visible, barely. So we're pulling one from the worksheet. So we're looking for data energy of magnesium oxide, and we're given a series of reactions, mostly by name, along with their uh, energies, enthalpies. So I'm going to do it two different ways. I'll do it the Born Harbor cycle method first. So the Born Harbor cycle is this cycle here. And there'll be various variations of this. But uh, on the right side, we're always going to have lettuce energy as being the bottom as taking the gas phase ions down to the magnesium solid. On the left side, on the bottom, we have our formation forming the ionic compound from the elements in their standard states. On the top of the right side is our electron affinity to make the negative ion. In this case, we need two electron affinities since we have a negative two charge. On the left side, we have sublimation taking our magnesium solid into magnesium gas. Since we have a diatomic uh, element here, we have the bond energy to break it down into atoms. So we take our um, O2, break it down to just O atoms. And then since we have a plus two charge, we have two ionization energies. So the arrows are showing the direction of energy that we normally expect it. So lattice energy is always exothermic, it's going down. Formation is exothermic, in this case, is going down. Sublimation, bond energy, ionization energy, ionization energy, take energy. They're all endothermic, they're absorbing, so they're going up. And then our electron affinity normally goes down. So our first one, in this case, is negative, goes down. The second one really would be going up. But we don't want to um, try to show that because this makes the diagram messy. So we're just going to still have the arrow pointing down uh, with the positive value of our equal flow in there. We have, uh, we're only using half the bond energy since the compound only has one oxygen atom. And the bond energy itself would be breaking the O2 molecule into two oxygen atoms. So we're doing one half the bond energy. And we have to watch out for other things like that. If we have uh, like MgCl2, the Cl would be using two electron affinities since we have two uh, chlorines in the compound. So to use a Born Harbor cycle, we're looking for the lattice energy. We can't go from this point to this point, so we're going to go the opposite direction. And when we do that, any arrow that we're going against, we subtract. So we're going to be subtracting our electron affinities, ionization energy, bond energy, sublimation, and then we'll be adding our formation because we're going in the same direction as the arrow. So to do this, we're going to be Subtracting the 844 kilojoules, uh, subtracting a negative 141 kilojoules. So we're going against it, we're subtracting it, we're going to subtract it with its number. We're going to subtract the 1450, subtract the 738. We're going to subtract half the 498. So I have the 498 is 249. We're subtracting 249. Subtracting the 147. Then we're going with the arrow, so we're adding it, but we're adding a negative number. So we're adding a negative 601. So we run that through our calculator. We end up with a minus 388. Eight kilojoules for the lattice energy reaction. So this is the Born Harbor cycle. Once you get used to this, it's easier than using the Hess's law um, type of problem. But that's what we'll do next. So the very same problem in uh, Hess's law summation form. So we were given. We're looking for the lattice energy. We're given our formation energy, sublimation, our two ionization energies, the bond energy, and our two electron affinities. 
So to match them up, we look for what is in the equation that we're looking for and is in a reaction. So the formation, formation reaction is giving us the magnesium oxide solid. So we like that reaction the way it is, but we still have to add up other things to get these into the gas phase ions. So we have a magnesium solid as a reactant. So the sublimation is magnesium solid as a reactant. So we can't use that. We reverse it to make magnesium solid as a product. So these two will now cancel out each other. So those will cancel out. But it also means I'm not going to be using the normal form of our sublimation. And when we reverse it, we change the sign from a positive to a negative. So the first ionization energy gives us magnesium as a gas. Uh, the one above it has magnesium as a gas, both reactants. So we're going to have to reverse the ionization energy to get magnesium as a product so we can cancel out. So we're not going to use the forward equation. We reverse it. We have magnesium gas canceling with magnesium gas. Uh, the second ionization energy starts with magnesium plus one as a reactant, and we have that already as a reactant. So we want to reverse reaction to get the magnesium plus one of the product. So we're not going to use second ionization energy in the direct form. So we have our magnesium plus one canceling. So now we have a magnesium plus two. This is what we want for our equation up here. So we have our second species from the equation. And uh, let's see what we have here. We have uh, one half O2 as a gas, as a reactant. Um, we had O2 as a reactant here from the bond energy. So we reverse it and multiply it by one half. So we get one half O2 as a product. That way we can cancel the one half O2s out. Which means we're not gonna use the bond energy in the direct form. We have uh, O gas, monatomic oxygen as a reactant. Um, our first ionization energy had monatomic oxygen as a reactant, so we reverse it to get as a product. So I'm not going to use the forward direction of the ionization energy, but allows us to cancel off our monatomic oxygen reactant and a product. That gives us monatomic oxygen with, with minus one charge as a reactant. A second ionization energy has a, a reactant, so we have to reverse it to a product so we can cancel the product. So our second ionization energy we're not going to use in the direct form, but let's just cancel off our O minus. It gives us our O2 minus as a reactant, the other reactant that we're looking for. We have a couple other things let's clean up. We have uh, two electrons as products and two electrons as reactants, so we can get to cancel those off. And if we have done this using my accounting system, everything is either crossed off or underlined, and it is. So that means we have these numbers that we're going to add up. So we have a That is a negative 601 minus 147 minus 738 minus 1450 minus 249 plus 141 minus 844. Run this through our calculator. We end up with a minus 3888 kilojoules for our lattice energy. So, this one is more tedious than the Born Harvest cycle, uh, but whichever you like is generally okay to answer one of these questions.